Hi this is Gary with MacMost.com. Today let me show you some tips for using Mac Mail. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than 750 supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about the Patreon campaign. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. So the Mac Mail app has a lot of hidden functionality that not even power users know about. Let's start with the simple one. If you want to create an email message that's primarily an attachment, you want to send a file to somebody, you don't have to start with Mail itself. You can simply drag something like this image here into the dock to the Mail app. What this does is automatically open up a new composition window with that file attached and in the message and you're right there ready to type who it's to. Now when you attach an image in a mail message you get to decide whether you send the original image or a more compressed version of it. In a lot of cases a compressed version is just fine. If you look over here you can see image size and you can choose from actual size and then small, medium, or large depending upon how big the image is. If it's a small image like this one you're not going to have medium or large options. Pay special attention to this. I often get a lot of screenshots that are automatically set to small and they compress the image so much I can't read anything on it. So make sure you're sending something that's appropriate. If you want somebody to get the full resolution image choose actual size. Otherwise choose one that works best keeping in mind that they might not have as much bandwidth as you do. Now a lot of us suffer from information overload. You're trying to get your work done and you're constantly getting interrupted with new email messages coming in. Well you can put a stop to that by going to Mail Preferences and then going to General. And there you could set Check for New Messages from Automatically to Manually. When you set it to Manually you then have to click this button for it to fetch email. So now you can wait until you're ready to deal with email before you see what's new. Now when you're looking at an email message like this and you want to respond you can hit the Respond button and you'll usually find that the message is quoted right there. But you can quote only part of the message by selecting that part and then hitting Reply. And notice only the selected part is now part of the response. This is especially useful if somebody sends you a lot of information and you just want to answer one specific question in there. Now you can find settings for this in Preferences under Composing. You've got when quoting text in replies or forwards include all of the original text or just the selected text if any. Also in Signatures you can control whether the signature is above or below the quoted text. So notice here it's above so the quoted text is down below which can make it hard for the person to see what question you're responding to. Instead if you uncheck that and then you respond you can see how it places their quoted text above your signature. Now you can simply click down in here and enter their question and it kind of reads more naturally. Now whether you're sending a new email or replying to an existing email you can blind copy somebody on that. So normally if I were to add another address to the To field it would go to both people. The same thing if I use CC here which just makes it clear who this is to and who's just getting a copy of it. But if you want to send a hidden copy so the person it's going to has no idea it's also going to another person you can go to View and then turn on BCC address field. Now you can enter in another email address here. The person the email is going to has no idea it's sent there. Now notice in the left sidebar you'll have things like iCloud or maybe Gmail or Yahoo right here identifying each different account that you've got. If you have multiple accounts with the same service like say multiple Gmail accounts it could be hard to figure out which one is which. But all you need to do is go to Mail, Preferences and then go to Accounts and then for each account look in Account Information and there's a Description field. You can change this to whatever you want. So you can call it something more appropriate and then you can see it will change here to reflect your description. Now while you're here take a look at Mailbox Behaviors. The first item here is Drafts Mailbox. Now a lot of people complain they have the problem where they have a Drafts folder that's filled with semi-completed email messages. And then you'll see these on your other devices and things as well. What I find is handy to do is change your Drafts Mailbox to On My Mac. So Drafts are saved locally not on the server. Another setting to look at is under Viewing there's a checkbox here for Smart Addresses. So notice here with Smart Addresses checked I just see the person's name. If you like that fine. But if you turn that off it will change its behavior if I click away and then click this message again. You can see now it shows me their name and their email address. Now when you go to compose a new message and you start typing you'll see some suggestions. Now some of these you may recognize from your contacts. Some of those aren't in your contacts. They're taken from emails you previously received. If you want to edit that list go to Window and then Previous Recipients. And then you see a list here. 
You can go through it. You can select one, remove it from the list. You can also select one and add it to your contacts. Now let's say you get an email to you but it really should be handled by somebody else. You may want to forward it to somebody and you can use the forward button here and now it takes that message, it quotes it, and allows you to enter in your own message at the top. If that's what you want, fine. But if you want to just send this message exactly as it is to somebody else, instead go to Message and then Redirect. This then takes the message as it is here and sends it to whoever you specify. Now let's say you're composing a new message and you've attached an image or a PDF document and you want to point something out in the document. You can annotate it right here by clicking on this button, choosing Markup. And this brings up markup tools. And you could do a variety of things, like for instance, add an arrow. Then when you send this, that is what the recipient gets. It doesn't change your original image at all. It only changes the one that's sent. This also works with PDFs. You can choose markup here. And then you can mark up the PDF with something. And we can quick look at this PDF here in the message, but your original PDF isn't changed. Next, I want to show you a feature called Smart Mailboxes. You can create one by going to Mailbox. And then New Smart Mailbox. Now I think this is a misnamed feature. Instead of Smart Mailbox this should be called Smart Search. Because the best way to use it is if you're performing a search pretty often you can make it much simpler. Like for instance here you could see I can name this what I want and I could say contains any message that's from this particular address. But I could also add other criteria. So for instance I can say if it's also from this address. So in other words messages that come from these two. But there are tons of other criteria that you could use as well to build a very intelligent search and save it as a smart mailbox. Matter of fact you'll get one here by default that's just today and it just shows you all of today's messages. So for instance you can create a smart mailbox from all the messages coming from a particular address or a particular domain or maybe containing a particular subject. And then instead of having to manually organize those into a special mailbox or to perform a search over and over again every time you want to see those you can just go to your Smart Mailbox. Now the notifications you get when you get a new email can be customized. You go to Mail Preferences and then to General. You can see New Messages Notifications and you can change it to Inbox Only or Only When You Get New Email From VIPs or Somebody In Your Contacts. Or you can even use a Smart Mailbox. So you can set up a Smart Mailbox that's specifically to indicate who you're supposed to get notifications from when you get a new email and then just use it here. You don't have to even look at that Smart Mailbox. You're just using it as a notifications filter. In addition to that you should note that you can go to System Preferences and then to Notifications and from there you can go to Mail and here's where you set up what notifications look like. You can use Banners that will go away automatically or alerts that stay there. You can determine whether or not they're in Notification Center, whether they're seen on your lock screen, or whether there's a badge on the app icon, a number that tells you how many new emails you have. Now if you're ever having trouble with email, if you have a mailbox or an account that just doesn't seem to be updating, the first thing you should do is select that mailbox and then go to Mailbox Rebuild. And this will rebuild what you see in your mail app from the information on the server. Also notice here on the sidebar you have Favorites here at the top. So I have Inbox and Sent. But you can see Inbox and Sent are also here under my account. I can put something else like for instance if I wanted to have Archive in Favorites as well I can move that up there. And I can then hide this because everything I really need is up here. You can control click on these and remove them from your favorites as well. Or just drag them out. Now if an email is really important and you want to save a copy of it somewhere outside of mail all you need to do is drag and drop. I could just drag and drop this to any Finder window and you can see it creates an EML file. I can even select that and hit the space bar to look at it in Quick Look. And if I double click on it it will open it up in the Mail app in a separate window. Now let's say you sent an email to somebody but then it bounced because their email address was wrong. You don't have to go and recreate the message from scratch. You can select the message from your Sent Mailbox and then go to Message Send Again. And that brings up a composition window with the exact message you sent before. Then you could just delete the To address there and type a new one and then send it. So here's one last tip. If you want a different way to view your list of email rather than this method here which shows you everything about that message in a tiny little block you can instead go to the Column View. Go to View. Use Column Layout. Now Column Layout is different in Big Sur than it was in previous versions. It looks more like normal columns that you would see in other apps. You can click and click again to sort the columns. You can adjust the column widths. And you can Control click and select other columns to view as well. And you could select to have the message preview here on the bottom or you can go to View and Show Side Preview and get the preview here on the right side. 
drag that line to change how much space is available for the list versus the preview. So I hope you like this look at some Mac mail tips. Hopefully you're able to use some of these to increase your productivity. I publish new tutorials every weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out. Then hit the little bell icon to get notifications for each new tutorial.